On this episode of Sports Science, we're on a quest to find the highest flyers in sports. Next, we're getting horizontal as we fly over the goal line. Basketball players can get vertical and horizontal. After all, we've seen the world's best basketball player dunk a ball from the free throw line. Running backs don't have to get 10 feet in the air. They just need to get high enough to avoid getting crushed. So in our quest to find the greatest flyers in sports, we want to know. Can an NFL running back jump farther than an elite pro basketball player? It's time for running backs to get up and over. The venue, our sports science AstroTurf football field. The challenger, NFL Super Bowl champ, Dominic Rose. Doesn't matter if you're in junior high, college, or the pros. You want to be a tailback, you better know how to fly. We set up a mock defensive line for Dominic to clear, then wired him up with the A-Pod. This is a state-of-the-art wireless human performance measuring system. Its gyroscopes and accelerometers will measure Dominic's horizontal, vertical, and lateral forces. You ever had your vertical leap and horizontal leap measured at the same time? No, -uh. nothing, uh, nothing like this. This should, this should be pretty fun. Well, hard for us to tell how far to set it up, so we've added a lot of distance. I'm kind of excited right now. Get on out there. We know it's rose time now. Time to get major air, baby. Our crash pads are set at five yards. That's 15 feet, the same distance as the free throw line. Dominic's first flight overshoots the runway. It's all right. <laughs> Good, man. I'm actually great. Let's push everything back because he is, he's getting too much air. All right. I mean, this is amazing. This is a huge gap. Are these pads too far back or is this right? Oh, man. Hey. I know it looks far. It looks far, but you cleared them last time. All right, yeah. yeah That's a long way. Using data from our sensors and our state-of-the-art motion capture technology, we are able to track every phase of Dominic's flight. Since a running back in flight doesn't have to worry about landing on his feet, he can really lay it out. He doesn't have to reach 10 feet to the rim. He just has to get over the goal line. Dominic's maximum flight soared a stunning seven yards horizontally and almost six feet vertically. Plenty of air to clear a morphing line of scrimmage. And in basketball terms, his flights are far enough to carry him from beyond the NCAA three-point line all the way to under the basket. That's over 20 feet. But Dominic's flight was unchallenged, so we wanted to dial up the difficulty. Dude, you all right? That? You all right? Yeah, I'm just laying still for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like a touchdown. If you're five or six yards in the air, literally, you're going to be first and goal on the 10 yard line, they're gonna like, well, let's just call yeah, let's, two let's, plays yeah, yeah. and he'll just jump over, jump yeah. over. Yeah, I don't think it's that easy, but I mean, from the looks of things, that's kind of what yeah. you can do. Yeah. So the jumps that we've been measuring have been pretty straightforward. Now we wanna add a little bit of a twist to it. What we're doing is we have cones set up. To the left, this is the one hole, this is the two hole, this is the three hole. You've been going up the two hole every single time. But that doesn't always happen in football. Plans change. Somebody pops up, fills the hole. So what we're doing is we're gonna have lights representing 
each of the holes that we want you to go to, but we're not gonna tell you which hole you're gonna go to until after you have the ball. So you have to make a split second decision. We're gonna see how this split second decision affects your vertical and horizontal lead. Here we go. In our test, when Dominic is forced to react to random lights, a split-second hesitation changes the equation. He attempts to compensate with increased lateral acceleration, but his jumps both horizontally and vertically decrease by 20%. In a game of inches, it can make the difference between a touchdown and a crash landing. Oh, yes. <laughs> what happened? I jumped out the road foot, boy. That light popped up on me late. I thought it was going to be the middle light. That thing played with me a little bit, but it's all good. It's fun. It's very realistic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely uh, realistic because you never know what's going to happen on the goal line. Realistic, all right. The only thing missing was the cheerleaders. Thank you. Next on Sports Science, we're going deep with one of the greatest athletes on the planet, Jerry Rice. And we finally answer a question that we've always wanted to ask. What's a bigger target for a quarterback? Chad Johnson or an elephant? On Sports Science, Human Flight.